Hello and welcome again to my shop. Uh, today I'm going to explain how a working power reverse gear, how it operates. And this is the model here. It's an actual working reverse gear. And uh, when we had Mercer, we sold quite a number of these, probably upwards of 500 units. And I personally machined probably 30 to 40 over the years. And um, uh, I, I, everybody asked me, well, how, how hard is it to machine? It's not very difficult to machine. It's more difficult to get them to work right after you machine them. So it takes a little bit of fiddling uh, to get them to work. But once you accomplish that, then they work fairly well as long as they're maintained. And uh, primarily that's in the, the valve, which is here, which I'll explain later how that works. Over here, well... That's the controversial tank. And they won't talk about that, but it's a tank that's going to be pressurized uh, with air, and it's filled, as, it's filled with water, and then there's air on top of it. The press push down, and then the pressurized water will come out this hose and act as if it were boiler water pressure. Now what I do on a locomotive, I provide a place, it's not a good idea to take it from the blowdown because that's a little too close to the mud ring, but when I build the boiler with the anticipation of using a um, power reverse, I put a fitting or weld a, a bushing several inches above the mud ring that I use for a takeoff for that purpose. And I have one on the 1361 ready to go. This unit will be placed on the 1361. By the way, this little piece on the end here is a, an auxiliary tank that the Pensy used. This is a dummy. It's just a, a solid chunk of bronze that I machined up to look like the, the auxiliary tank that were on those units on the Pensy. Now, Alco made these. Alco American Locomotive Company made these. This is considered a Model G. Uh, I've been making... I mean, The first one I made was about 30 years ago. And I fabricated it from solid and machined and cut it and so on. And then after that... Uh, the popularity, I found out that it worked well. I made I made patterns and then made castings for that. And then consequently sold a lot of kits as well as machined units. Um, in later years, after they weren't available anymore, uh, Dave Moore now makes a power reverse. But his is a Model H, which is a little bit bigger than this one. A little bit bigger in diameter and the stroke is longer. This one has about a 2-inch stroke, which is enough... Um, if you set up your reversing lever correctly with the proper amount of uh, throw on it to get the full um, the full depth of the expansion link where you want it to be down in the expansion link both forward and uh, you know plus or minus of center which is center is, is, is neutral of course and this is a small quadrant here and it, it, it's pretty close to scale as far as the size goes and and it um, um, works fairly well. It's a piece of um, piece of gear that I had a, a segment of a gear I cut it out and then used that and of course made lost wax castings and castings and whatnot and so on. I added on this one I added a etched plate which sometime in the future I'm going to do a video on how to make etched plates but this plate here is uh, what they had on those they had an identification plate on those uh, on the Pensy Power Reverse gears. I'm not sure about the others but this one had it so I made one. Um, on this particular gear, the Pensy wanted their operating levers and so on on the back side of it for whatever given reason, I don't know. But when they're buying 425 of them just for the K4 alone, I guess they could pretty much dictate to Alco what they want. Um, and they had them on just about every engine that the Pensy owned, uh, of, up to up the N1s, and I don't think the... Uh, the T's and some of those bigger engines had them, but uh, up to the M1's they had them, the L's, the M's, the H's, uh, the I's, they all had power reverse gears and even the 040's had them, believe it or not, 040, 060, they all had power reverse gears. Uh, this one, the, this, the model, uh, a, lot say, why, a lot of fellas say, why don't you run it on, on steam or air? And they don't really work that well on steamer air. The, the air doesn't compress any small leaks. This will move on you from the movement of the valve gear. And the steam does the same thing. And um, where I found that the, the hydraulic, hydronic 
style water pressure. It's solid as a rock and that's what you want and it works very very well. The scale movement, it's got a scale movement and so on. So I'm going to demonstrate that and um, and uh, explain how it works. The, the small valve in here, the, this is the pressure side so there's pressure against the valve and then back here by movement of this it, it um, it opens the valve and then as this moves it shuts the valve off and if you stop moving this so it acts as a pivot and then shuts itself back off and then it recenters itself so even if there's any movement in this it's going to continually reset itself and and uh, that's one of the reasons why you always have pressure on this some people turn them off if they get in reverse or forward or whatever they turn it off and that's not a good movement move move because as the valve gear has a tendency to push against this it continually recenters itself and keeps it in position. So it works pretty well. I've had uh, great success with them. My original Pacific, uh, built in 1974, still has it on there. The new owner is still using it. And um, I put them on the Camelbacks. I've put them on several other engines, and they work well. And this one will go on the 1361. And I expect to have the same success with it. So uh, at, I'm going to cut at this point, and then we're going to go into the actual operation of it. Okay, this is going to be the operation of the reverse gear. At the moment, it's in center. As I forward, move this forward, you see it's slowly moving in proportion to my movement of the, of the quadrant. And then as I pull it back, it comes all the way back. And then I went back to, to neutral again, to center. And you can see, you can't really push on that too much. It'll hold quite a bit. And there's about 80 pounds pressure on this right now. The clear tubing you see here, that's the exhaust. It's exhausting down to a bucket I have on the floor. But this would normally be a pipe running down in between the frames, in the center of the frames and the center of the track to over dump on the track, out on the track where, you, where it won't uh, involve the, uh, the drivers and so on. The valve leaks a little bit. That's only because I can't really have a, a, any type of a seal on the, the, the shaft. And what would happen... It wouldn't be that sensitive to movement and then wouldn't work as smoothly. So, here it is. Back. And then center. <laughs> 